Check it out, they have a bus here without a driver. It's a self-driving bus. I am in Guangzhou, southern China, and in this video, we are going to take a self-driving bus that operates here in the city. Oh, this feels futuristic here. While I'm trying to find this bus, I will show you around. We will get some first impressions, try some local food, and I will also show you two more futuristic things I came across here. So what's Guangzhou like? And how futuristic is China really? Let's find out. Feel free to join. And welcome to Guangzhou. Today is my first day here. I just left my hotel. I arrived yesterday evening and now we're getting some very first impressions of this mega city here yeah over 20 million people are living here and I'm coming from a small village in Germany so this is like a different world for me totally so I'm quite excited to have a look around and take you guys with me and also have a look at this there are so many bicycles here that you can rent you can just scan the QR code here and then uh, pay via an app and then you can rent these bicycles here to cruise around the town and I remember when I was in Shanghai, I also saw many of these bikes all around the city. And also we have all these electric scooters here cruising around the town. Very quiet, they make almost zero noise. And I have the feeling that these are required to be electric. Also most of the cars here, or at least many, seem to be electric. And therefore the noise level is actually quite low. So actually that's also a very surprising first impression. You arrive in a city of over 20 million people and the first thing you think is, wow, it's gotta be chaotic, loud. But no, that's not the case. It's actually quite quiet here, as you can hear. So we have a big main road here, but you almost hear nothing. And yeah, I'm not sure how many of the cars are actually electric, but my impression is that it's a lot of cars here. So very good first impressions here. No chaos, very clean, seems to be well organized. Maybe you saw my previous video of my arrival here, where I already got some first impressions of the metro system. And wow, the huge buildings here. Oh, that looks interesting. Oh, we can buy something here on the streets. Oh, some bracelets. Hello, Ni hao. What are you selling here? Ah, some bracelets, ah, amulets here, ah, ah, that looks interesting. Chenzhu. Chenzhu? Uh, uh. What is that? I don't uh, speak Chinese. Uh, uh, how much? Uh, 15? Maybe she means 15, I'm not sure. Let's see. Uh, oh, I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> No English? Eh? Eng English? No. no English. No Chinese. <laughs> Let's see if we can uh, buy something from her despite the language barrier. 100. 100? How much for the bracelet? Uh, maybe this one, the, the green one, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I think she's also getting out a translator. Yeah, you have to work your way around the language barrier, which is totally fine. I don't expect that people here speak English. This is China, not England. 50. You have a little bit cheaper? Let's see if we can bargain here. I'm not sure if you can bargain in China. 45. How about... Let's see if I can make a counter offer. 30. <laughs> she's smiling. Okay? Okay. Oh, okay. Seems to work. This one? Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Thank you very much. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, and just like that, we bought something from a lovely lady here on the street. I found a little park along the way, and something that I see all around the city are people cleaning. You see the, the guy with the with the blue uh, jacket there. He's uh, swiping the floor, and you see that actually all around the city, so there are people probably employed by the by the city cleaning the roads. And that leads to a very clean environment here. You can see this park here, super clean, nothing to complain about. Nice little spot to hang out. It is a Sunday, early afternoon now, so you can see families here. There's even water. Let's have a closer look, actually. Oh, we do have a map here. Oh, also in English here, that is quite convenient. Oh, actually, it looks like a quite big park here, right? Oh, check it out, that looks lovely. And wow, I like views like this with the big skyline in the background. Oh, I love that. Wow, we have a vending machine here. But I'm not sure how to pay here. And everything is in Chinese here. Yeah, there are some difficulties that you uh, come across when being in China as a foreigner. But I would like to try to figure it out now. Let's see if I can get a sprite. Ah, you can scan it with Alipay. Let's try, I have Alipay now. And yes, payment successful. It worked. I was able to get a sprite here. So once you're connected with the Chinese apps, 
Everything is more convenient here. I got a Sprite and what I like here, same as Coca-Cola, they don't write Sprite on it. They have a Chinese translation on it. And China is actually the first country that I traveled to where they actually translate the drinks like Coca-Cola and Sprite. Even if you are in like Thailand or Malaysia, the Philippines, they write Sprite on it, the English word. But here they have a different word written on it. And also here, another person cleaning the floor. This is now, I think, the third person already that I see in this park cleaning and I'm here for only five minutes. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Wow, I love sceneries like this. This is a beautiful park, a beautiful Sunday afternoon here. You are surrounded by all these huge skyscrapers here. Oh, I really like the city so far. Maybe let me quickly compare it to Shanghai. Maybe some of you have seen my videos in Shanghai from a few weeks ago. And Shanghai and Guangzhou now are the only two cities I have ever visited in mainland China. So. Let me do a quick comparison. So my first impression, so obviously I'm just here for, this is my first day here, so less than 24 hours. But my impressions so far are, it is actually quite similar to Shanghai in terms of uh, it looks organized, it is clean, modern buildings. But I do have the impression that Shanghai is a bit richer, which I think Shanghai is a richer city than Guangzhou. So it feels a bit more rich and posh in Shanghai. And I also think that Shanghai is a bit more modern. But uh, these are just literally my first impressions. So if you have been to both of these cities as well, maybe you can let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. And yeah, in case you don't know yet, I'm going to travel around China on this trip. So I'm not only going to stay here in Guangzhou, I have other cities on my list to visit. So if you're curious to follow the journey, feel free to subscribe to the channel. You know what's always very interesting for me when I am in a new country? Just to witness the daily life of the locals. This is a regular Sunday afternoon today and just walking around here and see what the locals are doing. I don't know, maybe it's just me, maybe it sounds very boring for you, but I really enjoy just have a walk around and just witness is the daily life of the locals like <laughs> check it out the children's are too fast the mom is chasing them little random things like this which are pretty normal in every country you know i would say in every country that i travel to in the end the people all over the world are all the same doing the same daily things 99 percent of the people around the world are very friendly and welcoming but moments like this are always moments that i really enjoy while traveling and this reminds me once again that yeah, I just love traveling and experiencing new countries. Check it out, I have an interesting looking stadium here, which I don't think it's a sports stadium because there's no field here and it's not totally a 360 degree with seats. I think it's probably a stadium for concerts or events. And this actually looks unique. I'm not sure what these pillars here are for. Reminds me a little bit of uh, have you seen the Harry Potter movies? The Quidditch Stadium? But yeah, I am getting hungry. What I'm missing is some street food here now, you know? Little stalls selling some food. Oh, I think this is the center point here. This is the middle of the, the area. Yeah, right in the center. Oh, pretty cool view here. There are so many green areas here. That's also something that I noticed in Shanghai already. The city has a lot of green areas, parks spread around the city. And it seems to be the same case here as well. So when you live here, you actually have a lot of places where you can just go chilling, especially on the weekends, enjoy the sun, enjoy the weather. Check this kite out. I think this is the longest kite I've ever seen. Starting right there, there's an old man and he's like making it longer and longer. <laughs> wow. This is insane. Must be like, maybe like 50 to 60 of these little kites stick together. And I also want to show you something that I came across in my hotel earlier. Check it out. There's a robot here. And I think the robot is delivering something to the room here. Oh, that is very interesting. And now the robot is just driving away again. <laughs> Welcome to China, this is incredible. Let's follow the reward a little bit. Oh, wow. What's it saying? Working, do not disturb. Let's see, how is the robot taking the elevator? It says rating. So how does the elevator know that the robot is waiting? Maybe the elevator is connected to the robot? Wow, the robot knows that the elevator is here now and is going into the elevator. Wow, guys, I'm out of words. This is the first time I see this. Wow. <laughs> Have a look at this, we have street food here as well. That looks good actually. Hello, Ni hao. What is this? With egg? Ah, okay, one please. Okay, five? Okay. 
Not sure what it is, but I'm happy to try. I think he meant this is with eggs. So egg and then flour. So maybe like a little pancake. We also have sausages here. Ah. Okay, let's see. Anyway, okay, okay. Ah, I think there's egg inside. Oh, looks like a little pancake filled with egg. I think that's what it is. Um, my, my own. No, just a pure pipe. Okay. Shishi, thank you. All right, I think it is very hot. Maybe too hot for me to eat it right here. You don't find street food everywhere, like in Southeast Asia, in Thailand, for example, or Malaysia. But you can find little stalls here and there. Okay, so it looks like this. It smells, actually it smells sweet. I think the dough might be sweet. And then we have a, yeah, basically a fried egg here. Yeah, here you can see it, a fried egg as a filling. Let's give it a try. Yeah, the dough is sweet. The dough is sweet and I think there's also bacon inside here. Bacon or ham, not sure. But wow, this is actually very delicious. I like the combination of the sweet dough and then the savory filling with the egg and the, the ham or bacon. Oh, this is a great little snack. Just five yuan. And I was walking around for over an hour here now. I'm close to 20,000 steps. So a little bite like this is perfect. Oh, and I think there are also small pieces of tomato here. I can also taste the tomato, I think. And the last bite is just pure dough. And yeah, just the dough. Tastes like a regular sweet pancake. Oh, that was very delicious. Very nice. So it is possible to also find a little bit of street food here. But yeah, not as much as in Southeast Asian countries. Okay, but I'm actually hungry for some proper food. And there's a restaurant right here. That looks good. Chinese food. Let's see what I can get here. Okay, what I order it now is Lao Tan Sauerkraut Beef Noodles. And what's interesting is that Sauerkraut actually is a German name. So the English translation translates it to Sauerkraut. Do you also use the word sauerkraut in English? It is a German word. But yeah, I heard before that in some parts of China, sauerkraut is actually very popular. I like the open kitchen area here, so you can basically see how they prepare the food here. So everything is of course freshly prepared. And I actually saw that in many Chinese restaurants before that you have this type of design, like an open kitchen area here, which I actually like. When you go to a restaurant in Germany, it's always like I can't remember seeing an open kitchen area like this ever in a German restaurant. It's always somewhere hidden. And there's my food already. Oh, Shishi, thank you very much. Oh, that actually looks like a huge portion. This is way bigger than I was expecting, but wow, this looks delicious. So we have the beef here, we have the sauerkraut, we have noodles, some vegetables, and wow, we also have some beans here. Oh. Oh wow, and it smells delicious. And then, wow, this is, I think, the biggest spoon I've ever seen. Maybe I'm going to eat this wrong now. Not sure how you actually use the spoon. Maybe you put the noodles like this on the spoon. Maybe this is completely wrong, I'm not sure. Oh, this definitely felt wrong because the spoon is way too big to uh, fit it in the mouth, actually. Okay, the first impression is actually kind of sour. I guess that's coming from the sauerkraut. So it's a sour meal. Mm -hmm. Or the beef. The beef is really, really good. Not chewy. Sometimes beef is a bit chewy. But this is very smooth, very easy to eat. And then, oh, we actually do have a lot of noodles in here. I think the noodles are quite regular, I would say. Nothing too special. But what makes this dish special is the, the sour taste to it. Usually I'm not a huge fan of sour dishes, but this actually is quite nice. It's not too sour, but you can definitely taste the sourness. Okay, I finished everything. What's left is only the broth. And what's interesting here is, you have a little uh, section of the table here, which you can open. And then you have tissues, toothpickers. But uh, you need to know about that. I was just asking for tissues. And then he said, oh, it's right here. And what's also interesting, what I noticed, that it seems to be the case that in most Chinese restaurants, you always have to pay first before you eat. Which in Germany, where I am from, it's usually the other way around, unless it's a fast food restaurant. Okay, I just took the metro to the Canton Tower station. And this is the tower probably the famous the most famous building here in Guangzhou but I am not here for the tower I am here to find something very unique so this is the riverfront next to the Canton Tower which actually looks pretty beautiful it's a very nice place to uh, chill have a little walk around you can have a view over the water here the river then you have the skyline over there and then what a cool area to just stroll around sit down a little bit have a coffee or a tea together with friends there are also some boats here which i think uh, looks like a restaurant maybe i see tables on the on the top there so maybe this is a restaurant boat as well Ni hao. hello what are you doing here i think you can do uh, my signature here design my signature so we have to pay 18 
UN and then he gives me a set of different options and what do I have to write here? Your name. My name. name. So he's transforming it now into signatures. Let's have a look what he's doing here. Okay, he's redesigning the letters basically, writing it in a more beautiful way. So each of the fields that he's uh, filling out now has a different meaning. So the first one is like a business signature. So everything in different designs here now, but yeah, you can still recognize my name. Oh, that looks very beautiful. Oh, nice. Tolama. Tishi, thank you. <laughs> so I have a little souvenir here. Bought right uh, in front of the famous Canton Tower right here. Oh, we also have the tower here. Oh, yeah. Oh, Shishi, thank you very much. Check it out. They have a bus here without a driver. It's a self-driving bus which operates here in Guangzhou without a driver. That is very interesting. So we have all the, the cameras here, which the bus definitely needs. And then let's figure out how to use this bus. So we have cameras at the back as well. So there's actually a person in there which is like uh, the operator, but he's not actually driving the bus. He's just supervising everything. Because as far as I understand, this is still in the testing mode. So I can pay here as well here with Alipay. Yeah. You just scan it and then you have Alipay payment here. Oh, this feels futuristic here. A self-driving bus. I'm not sure if I'm worried or scared a little bit maybe. But I mean, this is there's still a person here supervising everything. So I feel actually safe, to be honest. Okay, he told me to put on the seatbelt. Obviously my first time in a self-driving bus, in a self-driving vehicle in general. So let's see what's happening here. So he's not doing anything. Wow. Oh wow, this feels weird at some point. Okay, so it's stopping automatically at the red light. He's talking with the bus. What did he say? to adjust the temperature to 18 degrees. So he can verbally say he wants lower temperature yeah. and then the bus reacts with putting the temperature lower. Wow. And yeah, check it out. He's not doing anything with his hands and also the feet. There's no accelerator or something. And the bus is just selfly operating around the streets here now. I can imagine in like 20, 30 years, this is going to be very normal probably all around the world, but I already can experience this here in 2024 in China. Ah, so there's a button here, which probably can stop the bus immediately in case anything does go wrong. Also, it's not the fastest bus. I think I read before that it is around 40, or maximum speed is 40 km per hour. Probably also still for safety reason that we're not speeding along the streets here. Okay, so we have a red light, which the bus noticed, and it's stopping, and it's stopping perfectly at the right line. So there was a bicycle driving by and you could see in the screen the object or the bicycle driver appeared on the screen and then it turned red. So there was a, like a warning signal. So the bus really detects if people are in front of the bus. Oh, and by the way, check out this car here. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm wondering now, why does the bus change the lane? How does the bus know when to change the lane? Okay, there's traffic coming from the side and the bus slows down. Yeah, you can see on the screen that the objects in front of us are being detected. And we have a bus stop here now. Yeah, the bus automatically stops at the stop. And then we have someone going in. No, and the steering wheel is turning automatically. And we're going back on the road. To be honest, it feels a little bit weird, but I enjoy it more than I am worried now. Ah yeah, so here you have also a map for the stops. So it's one, I think we're doing a circle basically. What's also interesting here at these stops, he's not pressing a button or something to like close the doors or open the doors. Everything is automatic in here. The guy is literally just sitting here. Seems to be the easiest job in the world, to be honest. Let me know in the comments if you would uh, like to try one of these buses or would you be too scared or worried? Let me know. Oh, we're doing a U-turn here now. Oh, there's incoming traffic. Oh, 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 okay, the bus is waiting. That's the, the German car passing by, the Audi. Okay, and I will continue the journey. So the bus did detect the traffic coming from the side and we did a successful U-turn here. Okay, and about 20 minutes later, we are back where we started. That was very, very interesting. So you can see, oh, we do actually have an accelerator and the brake there, which he has probably for emergency purposes, but you could see he didn't do anything with his feet the whole ride, and he also didn't use the steering wheel. Very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Wow, what a great experience, a self-driving bus here in China. Okay, they also have street robots here for cleaning the city. Wow, so there are cameras everywhere here. And then there's a robot picture here. And then I guess if this thing is turned on, then it just automatically drives around the streets here, cleaning it. You can see here the things that he uses to clean the roads. So we have robots for cleaning the streets, we have robots delivering food in the hotel, and we have the self-driving bus. Okay, and in the next video I actually will be joined by a local friend and she will show us around some food spots. And yeah, I'm having great first impressions here. I am very excited to be back in China. Many more videos from China are about to come. And if you're curious to see my previous video, my arrival here in Guangzhou, then feel free to check it out right here. Stay healthy, stay positive, and then see you on the next episode. Ciao, guys.